ตายาทางกะเดกะเดปารากะเดปารสมยะติโบดิโสตายาทางกะเดกะเดปารากะเดปารสมยะติโบดิโสตายาทางกะเดกะเดปารากะเดปารสมยะติโบดิโสยะส
and that uh, in that context then looking into the actual body of the teachings and they are then split <coughs> up into three main outlines, three main headings really <coughs> of uh, the path, uh, the, the stages of the path held in common with the being of a smaller capacity, medium capacity and greater capacity. And in the context of the first of these, looking into the teachings or the path in relation to in common with the being of smaller capacity, then what to do uh, during the actual session of meditation and what to do between uh, sessions. And that then in turn is looked at in terms of what to, uh, to do in terms of preliminaries, uh, what to do in terms of the actual session itself, and then at the conclusion, at the end of the session. So at the very beginning, um, with that uh, visualization of the, the Guru uh, on our crown, the Moninja Vajradhara, we make that a supplication. I make supplication to Moninja Vajradhara, who is the Supreme Lama Lord, embodiment of all refuges. And so that, uh, that particular prayer of supplication we can uh, uh, do it more extensively, continue on. There's a, a lot of uh, other objects of, to, to make supplication towards within that. And, and so we reflect as we recite that uh, to get ourselves really into the, the, the mood of the session. And so this uh, supplication can uh, substitute for the preliminaries, then there's the actual uh, body of the session itself, and then of course the conclusion. So we had been uh, looking into you know, the importance of this uh, precious human rebirth, how to take the essence of that, and also understanding that uh, you know, it's important to put the emphasis on future lives. And in, uh, in the previous uh, sessions of this uh, teaching, we had looked at uh, the uh, impermanence in the form of death, and the, the three main uh, kind of aspects of death, death is definite, the time of death is indefinite, and the, the fact that at the time of death only our spiritual practice will be of any benefit to us. At the conclusion uh, of that uh, section of that subject, we understood that after death, you know, it's not simply a matter that we disappear, that we must take rebirth again, and that the, the choices are only uh, either a, a positive rebirth or a fortunate rebirth or a lower rebirth. And that uh, 
we uh, understood that it, it, this all depends on uh, our uh, karmic imprints and it's so uh, only a positive uh, karmic imprints will lead to a fortunate rebirth. Uh, however, that uh, there is the great uh, danger of uh, falling into the lower rebirths. Therefore, uh, there is, if there was no lower rebirths to, to worry about, then there wouldn't be that much emphasis on having to accumulate positive, uh, uh, re, uh, positive karma or to avoid negative karmas. But the fact of the matter is, uh, lower rebirths are uh, a reality. And so here, the emphasis on uh, the subject today is that to really avoid uh, the, the kinds of actions, the kinds of karmas uh, that would accumulate uh, the causes to be reborn into these lower rebirths and to uh, do something about the causes that we have already created on our mind streams. And so it, it, it's a strong emphasis on doing whatever we can not to be reborn in our next rebirth into lower rebirths. And so uh, it's, uh, the key here is that if we don't have any karmas on our mind stream that would lead to uh, lower rebirth, there is no possibility uh, for us to be reborn in a lower rebirth. Tadi and so uh, these kinds of uh, teaching this kind of subject matter is to be understood within the full context of what a graduated path teaching uh, is uh, aiming towards and of course uh, a graduated path uh, is aiming towards the state of Buddha Buddha for anyone practicing it to attain that state of enlightenment and so here is to be understood that the teachings here under this heading are referred to as uh, the <coughs> teachings or the stages of the path held in common with the being of small capacity uh, this is to be understood that it's actually within the wider context of um, even the Mahayana motivation uh, to uh, and and so the the outlines detailing teachings in, held in common are in common with the being of smaller capacity and held in common with the being of uh, medium capacity are in fact to be seen as a means towards uh, the fulfillment of the teachings relating to the Mahayana uh, uh, motivation or as preliminaries even towards uh, that uh, the greater capacity path and so here the object is the state to reach the state of enlightenment and so this is seen as a uh, a task that covers eons that we go from eon to eon to eon practicing and so it's incredibly important for us to uh, in, in the interim to always um, guarantee that we have a sound basis on which to you know pick up uh, other teachings and, and continue on and through that, that those uh, eons and therefore uh, this emphasis on definitely not you know ending up in a low rebirth but always start maintaining at least a precious human rebirth to do this is is key and this is one of the main objectives of the lower capacity beings teachings <laughs> So 
So we can see that, uh, you know, in general, when we look at uh, the uh, teachings and in especially the objectives related to the smaller capacity uh, beings, the teachings, that uh, they are in, to a lesser or greater extent held by all uh, spiritual traditions insofar as, you know, whether it's a, any other spiritual tradition, they always have the promise of a better hereafter. And uh, so here this equates to a fortunate rebirth, you know, uh, by practicing the teachings of the smaller capacity being. And so when we say in the context of it being delineated as the path in common with the being of small, the teachings held in common with the being of smaller capacity, of course, that puts it into a more exclusive bracket because it's saying that here, this is, uh, of course, related to uh, the, the full body of the teachings, uh, uh, including uh, the Mahayana uh, approach. And so, for example, if we look at Christianity, so they have uh, the objective of um, attainment of um, uh, life in heaven uh, next to God. And that even though they don't have any uh, overt uh, teachings, um, uh, principles of, of, of past and future lives, uh, yet in some sense they do accept uh, future life, isn't it? At least one uh, where you are going to be reborn uh, in heaven. And so in, in as well, uh, the, the, the proper practitioner of uh, Christianity would uh, value uh, a future in heaven uh, more than uh, this life. And they would kind of base their behavior and so on in this life on uh, their getting the reward uh, of heaven in the future. And so this heaven, in many ways, it correlates to like a desire realm celestial being within the uh, Buddhist uh, context. And so that's when we, but when we uh, delineate the, this object, this outline as the path in common with the being of smaller capacity, uh, we are uh, really um, uh, describing it as part of the uncommon or exclusive uh, to a Buddhist path. <laughs> and so we begin again, as usual, uh, in contemplating the subject matter to come by reflecting, uh, contemplating from within the meditation of the Guru Deity on our crown. <laughs> Sanya 
And so uh, we have uh, looked at uh, how difficult it is to attain uh, this uh, precious human rebirth of uh, favorable conditions and opportunities. And having found it then also how meaningful, uh, how greatly meaningful it is. But uh, as well as that, we ha also have discovered that it is uh, very quickly will uh, disintegrate, will, will pass, will, we will uh, lose it. And so uh, here now it's pointing out that you know, when we do pass away, when we do die, it's not just a matter of our going out of existence, but we will take a rebirth again. And uh, we have only these two choices of uh, taking a fortunate or a positive rebirth and uh, are taking a negative rebirth. And so we, we uh, have to really consider uh, then what kind of uh, experiences would be uh, ours if we were to take rebirth in the lower uh, realms. And that uh, these lower realms then, for example, in the hell realms, the, the sufferings there are uh, characterized by tremendous heat <coughs> and cold. Uh, the sufferings of the hungry spirit realms are characterized by tremendous hunger and thirst and the sufferings of the, uh, the animal realms are characterized by uh, stupidity and kind of benighted ignorance and the fact that uh, they are uh, uh, constantly uh, eating each other. And there are four uh, main outlines then with the, looking at uh, these sufferings of the lower realms. So the whole point of what's to come here is that we are uh, become extremely focused on uh, the avoiding the causes that might re give rise to these kinds of sufferings. Because we know once the cause is created, then the suffering is going to f uh, reach fruition of its own accord. And that uh, here, the, 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 the main point is that we put a stop to uh, uh, these actions at the causal stage. Do not create the causes. And so therefore, like when we are looking initially, when we want to then contemplate on uh, these causes, uh, we have to understand as well that, you know, it's not just a matter of how we have behaved in this life, but we have to take into consideration that we have been around, uh, as Gana said, like with a permanent residency visa in cyclic existence since beginning this time, and that uh, we have been accumulating such causes uh, all that time, uh, such that we have countless such causes, like banked on in our mind stream. And though we have had the great fortunate for powerful positive karmas to reach fruition to attain this precious human life, uh, we cannot be complacent and we must understand that for sure we also have countless negative karmas on our mind stream that um, ha can lead to the lower rebirths. And so therefore, uh, the mo one of the most important things we should do is uh, purify and uh, apply restraint. Mm -hmm. 
老中的考给打的话了,要去春节要过去不中国人来呀,要老给我去的,没事情来了,刚才那说句话那说的太多了,过来那说句话人家。可是呀,当我做不习武器人家,要去了,就去不习武器春节要不习武器,可是就去不习
substantial cause meeting with those conditions, and then we will uh, 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 that karma will ripen into a cause to be born into a lower realm. And so it's a uh, you know when we uh, look into the details now, we'll see the various sufferings uh, associated with the hell realms, with the hungry spirit realms, with the animal realms, and we, we might find that very difficult to 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 take on board. Uh, very difficult to bear, but we must understand that these uh, are all of what's been described are related to causes uh, that have been created. And so if you think about uh, at the time of the cause, if the, uh, the negativity uh, is done with a great uh, purpose, great determination, so that, such that the preparation for it is, is, is done very well, the preliminaries as it were, the actual action is, is accompanied by great cruelty for example uh, and then of course uh, with the conclusion at the end maybe rejoicing in the very act of negativity. Now you're laying down tremendously powerful uh, karmic causes uh, uh, at that time and, uh, and if nothing is done to purify them and then of course they're going to uh, in, uh, easily uh, to be understood as the causes that can lead to uh, these kinds of results in the lower realms. And so here uh, we need to uh, uh, really uh, have uh, see that these uh, results uh, are possible uh, because uh, they are concordant or uh, they are in harmony with the causes that would create them. So the kinds of hell sufferings, the kind of hungry spirit sufferings as well, we must look at it in this context that they are possible for me because the causes uh, are there. And and so if we look at uh, then the kinds of uh, conditions that we talk about that might uh, trigger uh, the, the, the karma to ripen into, uh, let's say, look at the hell realms and the characterized as we have seen by hot or cold. And so at the time of death, if you have that karma on your mind stream, and then very simple conditions like simply feeling uh, very cold or have the appearance of being very cold and thinking how wonderful it would be to have some heat uh, to be warm. And that condition is enough to have you reborn into <coughs> the hot hells. And if conversely then, if you're at the time of death and you have that cause on your mind stream, to have the appearance of being very hot and really feeling that it would be wonderful if I just could cool down a little bit. And that condition is enough to trigger uh, rebirth in the cold hells. So it doesn't uh, take very much in terms of the, co the cooperative conditions uh, that might trigger uh, the, the, the cause uh, to ripen into these, uh, these lower realms. Uh, so we must uh, uh, really understand it. We must focus on uh, the uh, eradication of these causes. <laughs> And so of course, uh, if we do not have, if we have not collected such uh, causes on our mind stream, uh, then uh, these uh, appearances at the time of death of heat or cold to us uh, will not uh, lead to any rebirths in these hot or cold hells uh, because of course there is no cause and so there is nothing, the, the conditions are irrelevant and so we don't have to worry about that. And it's the very same is that like, the substantial cause and the cooperative conditions in relation to uh, the sowing of a seed for example, without the seed 
uh, even though we have all the other conducive conditions for something to grow, uh, nothing is going to because uh, the substantial cause in, in, as a seed is not there. It's exactly the same in this case. What <coughs> And so that, uh, you know, so therefore, uh, what we really need to focus really carefully on uh, the causes here. And that, uh, you know, uh, uh, and to understand, like, when we hear about the various sufferings and even the subject matter itself is something that we may dislike and not want to hear anything about, even the idea of hells and so on, we find very disconcerting and we don't want to have anything to do with it. But what we really need to see it as like that cautionary tale of saying, okay, if you don't want that, then you need to look at the causes. You need to focus on uh, your behavior in terms of uh, how you're accumulating the causes that might lead to these and absolutely uh, put a stop to it. And uh, understand that you already have many causes on your mind stream that need to be purified and that to engage in purification practice. So these are the kind of responsibilities, really, uh, that we need to take on uh, when hearing uh, these details. Yeah, what and so that's uh, it's uh, it's very important that you know we don't discount uh, uh, the <coughs> teachings on the lower realms uh, simply because we, we don't like that. It, it, it makes me uneasy to hear that kind of information. And that uh, this is not a, a beneficial attitude to have. And uh, really we have to uh, understand that what's the beneficial lesson uh, to take from uh, such uh, information. And that uh, we understand, one, that it's extremely uh, easy uh, to accumulate uh, the kind of causes that could lead to uh, these kinds of results. And so I don't want to re be reborn in uh, those uh, lower realms. Uh, I find it even you know, disconcerting to listen to or to hear that kind of information. So what should I do about it? What's the, the most beneficial uh, attitude I can take uh, from uh, this kind of talk? And that is to really put a stop uh, to the kinds of behaviors that could lead to the generation of causes uh, that could lead to these results. And and to set about purifying the causes that I already have accumulated. They Cassata 
的可说的，到那个在，的可说的，大概就大概就三年左右了，我这个这，我这个这，大概就就是把这把这把这家把这送过来，但把这那些大大的年龄没明显，的可说，第一在第一个样，可能没有多大的钱了吧，呃，钱都差不多得了一万多。伊那当年我是个越大军，东海的那两军我都越大军，要得钱。And so the the first of these then is looking at the sufferings of the uh, various hell realms, and this has four subheadings. And the first of these is the uh, the great hell of sentient beings, and then the neighboring hells, the cold hells, and the occasional hells. And uh, with the regard to the first, it said that these hells are uh, starting with the first of these, which is called the reviving hell. Um, it uh, exists uh, 32,000 yoganas uh, below the earth. And so, again, as pointing out that these kinds of uh, details of, you know, times and, and places and uh, the sites of these hells um, uh, and are not the important issue. Uh, they uh, they may not be e even that accurate. Uh, they are to be found within like many of the Hindu teachings as well. Who we discuss this uh, <coughs> stuff quite extensively. Um, but uh, they are in order to, like to give a, a whole overall picture. But what is to be focused on is and what's real uh, are the sufferings that are described in in these hells. Because <laughs> So again, I was pointing out, yes, that the, the, the maths may not be that reliable uh, in, the, in, in, these, uh, in describing where. So for example, we talk about these 32,000 uh, yoganas, an ancient measurement. And uh, traditionally, it's, uh, it's specified that it's 32,000 yoganas uh, directly below Bodh Gaya in India. And again, I was wondering how uh, that might actually, uh, you know, if we keep going down through the Earth's crust and into the core, 32,000 might end up somewhere in America. <laughs> uh, like, uh, the hell realms are in America. So that's, uh, you know, so we, we don't take that uh, too seriously. It's like uh, just for, uh, to give an overall picture, to give people an idea, some sort of an image in their minds. Uh, but really what's to be focused on is the sufferings. And and so too, like, you know, with the process here of uh, the, uh, if we have the kinds of karmas uh, to be reborn in the lower realms, and that, uh, you know, it's a question of uh, simply our, you know, exhaling and then not inhaling again. So bringing on the death process and we pass through the death process into the intermediate state. And that, uh, it, but it, it's not like, you know, we are going to be then traveling, you know, 32,000 yoganas uh, somewhere. And that uh, this is a, an automatic uh, rebirth in the lower realms uh, through karma. Uh, so we don't get a, a picture of going on some sort of journey afterwards, but it's uh, everything arises uh, through the power of karma. Mm -hmm. 
and so that's uh, so these uh, these thirty two thousand yoganas uh, reached the the first of these hells, in other words, the lightest of them, knowing as the reviving uh, hell, and then for each uh, four thousand yoganas below that, uh, another hell. So we go down then through the eight different hells in that way. And so the first of these, the, uh, the first of the eight, the lightest of these, the reviving hell is characterized by the following kind of suffering. Here, uh, sentient beings are born uh, through their kind of mutually collected karma. And through the power of that, then they are born there with weapons in hand and immediately start the process of hacking at each other and spearing and piercing and, and cutting each other until such time as they all kind of faint on the ground. And then a voice from the sky comes and says, now you will revive. And then automatically uh, they, uh, they get up again with weapons again and uh, go immediately into the process of attacking and uh, cutting and so on each other again. Now this goes on and on and on and on. This goes on many, many times each day in that hell. And that uh, it will continue on till the karma that is causing it uh, runs out. And so here, the notion of that this is the, the very l least kind of suffering we can uh, experience in the hell realms. And uh, already we can find that it would be unbearable. Mm -hmm. And so that, uh, you know, all we need for uh, to be reborn in this way, and to experience this kind of like uh, un inconceivable suffering, is that uh, we have accumulated the karma to to experience that. It's not like that uh, we have to uh, go to some sort of arms factory to get the weapons or anything like that. That uh, it's all automatic there. Uh, the karma, everything arises uh, according to the karmas that we have accumulated. Tibota, and we can see this kind of behavior in the uh, in human realm, isn't it? Very common, all too common with wars and conflicts and so on. And that uh, here we can, you know, talk about, uh, you know, that there, you know, uh, where uh, different uh, governments are very much responsible for this, arms uh, uh, exporters and dealers and so on. And then, uh, but in, in, in the end of all, it's uh, the individual who makes that choice to harm and kill and use these weapons that uh, they are, it's through their karma uh, that this is happening through the, and this is creating uh, the karmas on their own mind stream as well. So it's really, again, 
uh, that which is arising due to the power of karma that they're in that place at that time with those weapons available etc as well as uh, their choices to use them so for example if we you know we're kind of quite familiar with the the histories related to the first and second world wars and you know how much the incredible destruction death and suffering uh, that that all caused and if you read the the histories they're very keen to point out uh, the possible uh, you know, uh, causes in their minds of, uh, you know, uh, wayward governments, uh, cruel individuals, and uh, all the different uh, causes and conditions that, you know, started off uh, these wars and continued them on. But in fact, these are not the causes. These are just cooperating conditions. Uh, the causes uh, were laid down in the mind streams of each individual involved in these wars uh, as the substantial cause. Uh, that they had the substantial cause on their mind streams to be involved then and there and experience that suffering. So, so let the sub never in a take out the two million young girl mother and then they can't test the social legal body. That they can't test the two doctor, the social leco, the check with the twenty chasm sons of the and run a domain on the age of the two. That the social ledge is sunny to be on ticket. And so, if we did not have, if they did not have the karmas on their mind streams. Uh, to experience uh, those uh, uh, first and second world wars, uh, then they uh, would not, uh, or the conditions uh, that gave rise to these wars would not occur. Uh, but the, the fact is that uh, just at that exact time, uh, these conditions arose and that the individuals uh, had these karmas on their mind stream and therefore uh, it was inevitable that they would experience uh, all of the terrible uh, sufferings and depravities of the, of the world wars. Tanish so if we look at something like a, a natural disaster, like a tsunami, for example, you can see how karma plays out in, uh, in these kinds of situations as well where you might have in these places where uh, the uh, tsunamis occur, like, uh, you know, lifelong residents who have lived all their lives in, in that area. And that uh, perhaps because they didn't have the karmas on their mind stream to experience the sufferings related to a tsunami, uh, they might have uh, simply had taken a trip elsewhere uh, on that day uh, to go and visit somebody elsewhere. Um, and so never had to experience it. And yet, uh, on the other hand, we have, you know, maybe tourists who for the first time had gone to that country and gone to that place and uh, wanted <coughs> to experience life there. Uh, they had the cameras on their mind stream and they suffered uh, the tsunami. So we can see this kind of uh, situation unfolding constantly, isn't it? That uh, if one has accumulated the cameras to experience a particular uh, suffering, uh, uh, then, and one meets with the conditions to ripen that particular cause, then you're going to experience it. That's going to happen for you. Uh, but if you haven't accumulated the karmas to do that, then even, you know, against all odds, you will not have to experience uh, that suffering. <laughs> If you notice, if you pay attention to these uh, things, uh, then you will you will see uh, the the ways in which karma on uh, unfolds in these situations.
So the way the way to meditate on each of these uh, hells, uh, for example, in this case, the reviving hell is is really to assume that yes, I I definitely have karmas on my mind stream that could ripen into a rebirth in that kind of experience and to really try to visualize, try to really experience that you actually have uh, been reborn in there. So you have these weapons, you're going through that process each time. So really try to get a feeling, really try to feel it for yourself. And so if I were to be reborn like that, would I be able to handle it? Would I be able to really put up with it? And to have that sense of almost panic uh, I, I, that y you, you could uh, uh, end up there. And as a result of that, to have this kind of powerful determination to purify any karmas that might, have, might lead to a reviving <coughs> hell and to make a powerful vow uh, never to accumulate. Uh, these kinds of karmas or anything like them uh, in the future. And and, so, and to, to uh, compare to like you know when we do and inevitably do have you know difficulties in our human life as well and uh, we encounter problems or somebody is trying to harm us or doing us wrong and then we we do have some recourse to you know to the law uh, for example that we can uh, rectify the situation or have some uh, possibility some out but when reborn in these hells, there isn't any uh, anybody to uh, to help us. Uh, that we have nobody uh, to go to. There's no law there except the law of karma, and <coughs> which keeps you there. What <coughs> And so to really, uh, to really bring that sense of, uh, of hopelessness home if one were to be reborn into these uh, realms and uh, to really contrast it with even now in human life like when I have problems, when I have difficulties you know, at least I have friends uh, that I can take comfort with, or you know, relatives that might help me out, or a government that might support me. That we have possibilities, in other words, that we can overcome uh, the various the difficulties that we encounter as a human being. But uh, when reborn into uh, the lower realms <laughs> like this, none of this is available to us. You know, we are in a very, very profoundly hopeless situation no possibilities and so we must make sure never to end up like that so apena ngarazo ngarazo mizi din na lola miji ge ana sola kyunju che ba je bena o kira ta kira ya bo mindu tende che a kira mi tu ja de tende che la ba sa ngo ta sik ma so de ana che ge pa ne ba ge de de yo te ge yor ba pa ma ga ba che de yo te ge yor ba 
但是我觉得你是一个人的人的人的人的人的人的人的人的人的人的人的人的人的人的人的人的人的人的人的人的人的人的人的人的人的人的人的人的人的人的人的人的人的人的人的人的人的人的人的人的人的人的人的人的人的
uh, and you know basically disturbing our peace of mind in some minuscule way and we kind of take the wrong attitude towards that but also uh, the way we hunt after um, you know small uh, trills really uh, in order and in that in doing so uh, you know create a lot more serious negativities that might end us into uh, in uh, cause us to end up in the lower realms in future so we're kind of devaluing and misvaluing um, uh, happiness in that sense so we need to, you know, um, maintain the, the, the bigger picture of what Dharma presents uh, for us, the more far-reaching uh, goals that we should keep in mind, and uh, this, uh, and to really use that to counteract uh, the way in which we often, um, uh, you know, uh, the way we really often like uh, cause like a uh, tremendous. Uh, dislike for somebody who uh, interrupts our happiness and that uh, you know this is uh, is something that uh, should be discounted and it's not part of the proper spiritual life at all and that uh, here we have to understand that there's great danger for us in this regard uh, where uh, even uh, happiness the chasing after it and uh, the resentment of people who take it from us uh, can lead to very serious consequences and negativities that will lead to those serious consequences. And so as I constantly uh, emphasize, you know, that this life, this human life is in order for us to concentrate on the accumulation of causes for happiness. Not so much indulging in happiness, but really to, s to focus again on now is the time to lay down the causes for future uh, happiness. And so if we uh, concentrate on that, if we place the emphasis like this, uh, the fact of the matter is that we will uh, have in this life uh, more open-mindedness, more relaxation, and indeed more happiness. What <laughs> And so here at the conclusion of each of the descriptions of each of the hell realms, uh, for example, in this case, the reviving hell, of course, then we uh, we have recourse to the guru uh, on our crown, who's with us at, at all times, and to uh, really you know make our supplications uh, that uh, all of the uh, you know to 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 make supplications to our guru that all the um, uh, karmas that we have accumulated uh, since beginning this time, and in particular. Uh, karmas that might uh, result in rebirth in reviving hell uh, are 
uh, completely uh, purified from myself and all uh, the kind mother sentient beings all around me and that uh, we really have uh, that uh, uh, certainty at the end of, of that that uh, these particular uh, karmas uh, that <coughs> could have been could lead to a rebirth in the reviving hells are completely uh, purified <laughs> Tigdamata <clears throat> so the next level of the hells is the black line hell and here uh, you have uh, the hell guardians who kind of uh, grab the beings whose karma it is to be reborn there and uh, they draw these black lines on their bodies and these are simply just mark markings where they then cut them they saw them 
uh, along uh, these lines and and thus uh, these beings experience uh, limitless uh, suffering and again it's a case of trying to uh, visualize ourselves actually uh, taking uh, a rebirth in that kind of scenario and to to kind of feel how unbearable it would be even now like when we just have a scratch uh, on our arm or something it's something that it's very very sore very very difficult we want to uh, alleviate that pain as soon as possible but imagine uh, this kind of uh, su suffering and how unbearable uh, that would be and again, to understand like, okay, what is the point here? Not to create the causes that might be reborn there and purify the causes that uh, already have been created. And so it is with each uh, subsequent uh, of the hells, each one more, uh, more intense suffering than the last. And the next is this, uh, the gathering and crushing hell, where again, through uh, karma, the, the beings are gathered together there, uh, like in a, in a huddle, and then uh, other uh, uh, beings or uh, appearances with the kind of goats or rams heads uh, continuously crush uh, the people in, in between. And again, they have to experience a limitless suffering due to that. And that uh, here, uh, then we have the, the, the wailing uh, or lamentation hell. And uh, here the people are trapped inside an iron uh, a house uh, which is uh, in flames and uh, and they are burning inside and the next is the the hell of great lamentation which is a, a double uh, house where one uh, burning metal uh, house is inside another and so the the, the uh, suffering is in increased <coughs> then there is the the hot or hotter hell uh, here uh, the beings are in, uh, thrown into uh, these vast cauldrons to which are many yoganas deep and are burned uh, within and that uh, they are also uh, skewered with an iron skewer uh, impaled on that from the rear end up through the, uh, the head and that uh, they are all their insides um, uh, burn. And then and the kind of roaring flames issue from their mouths and the, and their eyes, etc. And then there's the even hotter hell, and to, to here uh, they are impaled on a on a, on a triple pronged uh, kind of trident, which is again uh, shoved through the rear end, and it comes out, pierces uh, the shoulders and and the head, and they are then uh, laid down uh, flat. Uh, on uh, on this burning uh, iron ground, and they kind of like have flat plates uh, placed on, on top of them, so that they're kind of uh, they're trapped inside that. And not only that, their then their mouths are pried open with iron tongs, and molten iron is poured in, uh, forced into their mouths, and so that uh, then they uh, kind of their whole insides uh, become inflamed like from the mouth, the throat, the intestines, down to the very uh, lower parts of their bodies. And then finally, in the eighth uh, level of hell is the Avicii, or the hell of uh, non-respite. And here, uh, the beings are uh, trapped within a, a blazing uh, house. Uh, and this, this has four uh, doorways and, uh, through which blow these, uh, like, massive winds which constantly fan uh, the fires so that they become incredibly incredibly hot and such so so that you know one cannot tell uh, the beings inside from the the fire itself and that uh, one can occasionally maybe hear uh, some kind of uh, roaring sound and uh, one might think oh maybe there is a, a sentient being within there but one cannot be sure uh, they cannot tell such is the suffering there the other aspect, of course, is that in through all of these hells, regardless of how intense uh, the suffering is, uh, it does not kill uh, uh, the beings, as like might happen in the human realm here, but that uh, you must uh, continuously experience uh, whatever suffering they have until the karma to experience that suffering runs out. <laughs> Uh, volcano? Volcano. 
你用到介绍一条这个速度啊，嗯，对，就被东海有被介绍一条这个速度啊，嗯，这这这这，韩国有嘛了？他天天找不到，他里三，去年天天了三千元四个的韩国嘛了吧？他 ，OK， so we have like in uh, is is there a volcano erupting in Indonesia at present? So they they apparently making this incredible roaring sound as well uh, within, and we and again. You 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 know you, you have to question whether it's a, these are the sounds of of the actual volcano and the and the terrible heat in within or are there sentient beings involved in that as well? And so it's possible with the, when we look into the incredible uh, uh, possibilities of karma, isn't it? That uh, if one has uh, the Tremendously powerful karmas on the mind stream, and uh, that uh, one could be reborn in that sort of scenario. Our understanding is very limited, isn't it? And what we can uh, accept in our minds, even, is very limited. <laughs> ดูจิตทุ่งโดจินะจิตดูจิตทุ่งโดมาดูจิตเป็นจมูกเนี่ยเว้ยมีตัวก็สมีก็สะท้าใจเนี่ยตั้งอยู่ว่าจะท้าว
And here it's relating to the, the lightest of the hell realms, the uh, reviving hell, where it says one average lifetime in the reviving hell is something like uh, uh, 1.62 uh, by 10 to the power of 12 years, which uh, uh, adds up as 1,620 billion uh, years. What did, what did I do that? I'm sorry, and then every hell below that, uh, the uh, the duration of lifespan is twice as long. <laughs> so again, I says uh, at least uh, this gives you uh, some uh, limitation as to how long you spend in hell. Whereas in Christianity, uh, if you get into hell, that's it, isn't it? You never get out of hell. <laughs> Forever. Yeah. Yeah. Mm, so possibly indicating as well that uh, when in Christianity they point to the fact that if you are born in hell that there is no escape, it's really uh, maybe saying that it's just a very, very, very long time you have to be there. What <laughs> Quite <laughs> <clears throat> so again, how do we make this real for us and relevant uh, to the transformation of our lives and of our attitudes. So it's really a case of trying to really feel that if I was to be reborn in any of these hell scenarios, and that, uh, you know, how could I possibly put up with that? How could I bear that? Imagine I was in my, my existence, my life was indivisible from the, the roaring flames uh, that were burning me. And that uh, I could do nothing about it, but had to bear it for eons of time, the, the length of time. And that uh, there's no way out until my karma runs out. So I've really, really got to find a way of never, ever uh, uh, allowing that to happen. You know, we have to take a really strong proactive decision to say, I must really do something to make sure that I never, ever ent enter into that situation. And so that means restraint of my body, speech, and mind. And that means I am looking into karma that is positive, virtuous, and I'm really concentrating on that on the one hand, and I'm also becoming extremely aware 
of the negativities that I've already accumulated, the karmas that I must purify, and really uh, setting out to engage in proper purification practice to do that. And so, you know, I can really uh, concentrate on the uh, causes to attain, uh, that really focused on it, the attainment of a, a fortunate rebirth of a human being or a, a celestial being. Uh, but I also know, uh, you know when re I reflect on that, that uh, that sort of rebirth is unstable, isn't it? It doesn't last either. Plus, uh, there's a lot of suffering, even as a human being. And so I should really be, you know, looking beyond that and really to try to uh, see what causes uh, need to accumulate in order to, uh, you know, get out of cyclic existence altogether. And that really deals with, you know, this uh, main uh, issue of uh, uprooting the ignorance of self-grasping and so on. And that means I need to focus on attaining liberation uh, from cyclic existence. But even that uh, falls short because you know, I really have to consider that all other uh, sentient beings are in the same boat, suffering in the same way. And they are very susceptible to all the kinds of uh, uh, sufferings available in cyclic existence. And that's not good enough. I need to really take responsibility uh, for them, take that special responsibility uh, to be able to free them uh, from that suffering. And that means I need to attain the state of omniscience, the omniscient state of enlightenment, of a, of a Buddha. And that means I need to really have that motivation to attain enlightenment for the benefit of all sentient beings, thereby uh, cultivating bodhicitta, the mind of enlightenment. And so uh, you can see how each level of motivation um, acts as like a stepping stone for the, the next level of motivation. And this is why all of this is, is relevant to the entire path. And so here, even looking into the sufferings of the lower realms acts as a basis uh, for the cultivation of the more expansive and more profound motivations for liberation and the omniscient state of enlightenment. And so that in this way then, even this, uh, you know, the, the, this unsavory uh, ex, uh, reflections on the sufferings of the lower realms, when we really recognize what's important about it, uh, can act as uh, uh, causes for us to engage in a better and a more common, a more frequent spiritual practice. And so like, if we don't reflect on this, if we kind of simply want to avoid it, then you know, the suffering is going to occur anyway. The suffering is coming anyway. And so it, it makes a, you know, it, it doesn't improve your scenario, situation uh, just by the fact that you, you, you don't want to think about it. But if we really reflect carefully on these kinds of, uh, of, of rebirths, and then we can, they can be really uh, commandeered into uh, enhancing our spiritual practice. They can be conditions uh, for us to engage in a spiritual practice and overcome uh, the possibility of uh, uh, in ending up in that sort of scenario. And so that uh, if the lower realms were lower realms were inevitable and that uh, you know we'd have to take rebirth in them and we couldn't do anything about it, then there's no point in doing anything about it, is there? But the fact is that we can do something now and we're in the best uh, situation to do that. Uh, we, there is a means uh, that we can use. There are a uh, plan that we can put in place uh, to avoid uh, suffering. And so, uh, and especially rebirth in the lower realms by really dedicating our mind, our lives more uh, completely to spiritual practice. Mm. 
And so then at the completion of the uh, looking at the uh, sufferings of the uh, the great hells uh, relating to sentient beings, in other words the hot hells, uh, we make the supplication to uh, Guru Maninja Vajadara on our crown, uh, and that's uh, really you know reflecting on uh, uh, what we have to to do, uh, that uh, we really have to reflect on the, the sufferings related to these hot hells, and that uh, to re consider and assume uh, that uh, you know w there are karmas that can lead to uh, rebirth in that kind of uh, uh, suffering and that to, to uh, I must really determine on the one hand uh, to never uh, accumulate uh, any karmas from now on that might lead there and to assume that I have many karmas on my mind stream uh, that would lead there so I need to purify them and please oh, Guru Maninja Bajadara please bless me uh, to be able to do this and as a result of our heartfelt supplications uh, five colored nectar lights emanate from the heart center of the Guru on our crown, entering into uh, the bodies and minds of uh, myself and all kind mother sentient beings all around, uh, purifying all uh, negativities and obscurations uh, since beginning this time in general, and in particular uh, the uh, negativities uh, that might have led, that might lead to the lower realms, and in particular uh, these uh, hot hells and that uh, we uh, are uh, become c certain that they are completely purified from our system. ลําเชียเจสเกทูยูเคมายิบาลานับตูซิกินับเชนราเกจิบอนมาชูราดาราเกทาวซิมเจจิบอนมาทอมเมบเอจิบอนมาชูเนจิบอนมาราดาร์
really uh, below uh, the ground opening up and then uh, the uh, massive uh, mouth of the Lord of Death opening up and, and swallowing. Oh, very deep down. The Lord of Death is very, very deep down with the open mouth and there are kind of uh, all the uh, negativities and obscurations that we have been contemplating uh, leave uh, the bodies of ourselves and all the sentient beings and, and fall into this crack and down into uh, the open mouth uh, of uh, the Lord of Death as if like satisfying the Lord of Death and that uh, at the conclusion of our meditation the mouth closes over and the uh, the earth closes over and is sealed by a double door J. and we really feel that all of that uh, negativity now all of that obscuration has been completely uh, taken care of and then we visualize at our own heart center uh, the upturned eight petaled lotus on which sits the lotus and moon uh, seat uh, mandalas and uh, we then invite uh, the guru uh, Muninja Vajradhara on our crown O oh, glorious and precious root guru come take your lotus and moon seat place there at my heart uh, keep me safe in your kindness bestow on me the attainments of your body speech and mind uh, we recite uh, this uh, three times uh, beginning uh, the journey down through our central uh, channel and then completing that journey uh, sitting on our seat and then with the third recitation uh, really feeling that the, the Guru has uh, remains with me until I attain uh, the state of enlightenment as well. Then <laughs> And so then the um, the upturned eight petaled uh, lotus, these petals then fold over and enfold uh, the figure of uh, Muninja Vajradhara at our heart center. And that is sealed at the top by a half Vajra. And then it is encircled by the uh, uh, the Sanskrit vowels in a clockwise direction, the Sanskrit consonants uh, circling in an anti-clockwise direction, and then uh, thirdly and finally the mantra of dependent origination in a clockwise uh, direction. And to feel that uh, uh, this, uh, this package at our heart center is uh, very stable and that uh, from within there, from the figure of uh, Manindra Vajradhara, light rays uh, emanate and they permeate all through every cell of our body and mind and all sentient beings. And we really have this feeling of being completely transformed into that light such that uh, any uh, iota of our self-cherishing and self-grasping nexus have absolutely no opportunity to operate, no opportunity to influence us whatsoever. Sanjay, 
and we think you know can rejoice that this is something really wonderful this is really great that uh, I have the you know protection of the guru until I attain the state of enlightenment as well I totally rejoice in that and then through the combination of my own more subtle wind and the body of uh, the guru Muninja uh, Vajradhara, my own body transforms into the enlightened body of a Buddha. And so so we should not have the Nilenja, Lama Shaja Singh, to the Nilenja. And then through the combination of my own more subtle mind acting as the substantial cause together with the uh, the mind of Muninja Vajradhara as the uh, cooperating conditions, my own mind transforms into the enlightened mind of a Buddha. And this is uh, something wonderful now. My own body, speech, and mind are indivisible from the body, speech, and mind of the of the Guru Buddha. Then, nang la rashi me ba samu toa sta. Then dege ne rang lunga yesum ta. Then lama shaya sam lunga yesum ta. Go ye me chua nang nang dee chua. Nang dee a yu de ne mo chua to be phanta sam le sam. Nang la rashi me ba samu toa sta. And then this uh, appearance of uh, my own uh, body, speech, and mind being indivisible from the body, speech, and mind of the, of the Guru Buddha, uh, that this uh, appearance is, uh, we know that it does not, uh, uh, the, uh, that does not exist uh, in the way that it appears, that it is merely uh, imputed by a uh, thought. And then, the idea, and the place uh, that we are in also is transformed and uh, is purified of all fault and transforms into a pure Buddha realm. And then, uh, knowing uh, ourselves as a fully enlightened Buddha, we emanate uh, countless rays of light from our heart center equal to the number of all sentient beings, including beings that we regard as, a, as friend, as a neutral, as enemy, and all the realms of existence, all the six realms of existence, uh, entering into the crowns of all sentient beings, and uh, they also uh, automatically and spontaneously arise as fully enlightened beings. Mm -hmm. And the places that all these sentient beings are in are again purified of fault and transform into pure Buddha realms. And that uh, these also kind of do not exist in the way that they appear. How wonderful today is the day I have been able to place uh, all sentient beings into enlightenment to fulfill the purpose of all sentient beings. I totally rejoice. And I know that I'm just making this manifest now, but may it be for for clear maybe maybe for truly manifest uh, in fact manifest as quickly as possible and make this uh, dedication yeah. we do our lamrim prayer <coughs> From my two collections, vast the space that I have amassed from working with effort at this practice for a great length of time. May I become the chief leading Buddha for all those whose minds must demise blinded by ignorance. Even if I do not reach this state, may I be held in your loving compassion for all lives and industry. May I find the best of complete graded paths of the teachings, and may I please all the Buddhas by my practice. Using skillful means drawn by the strong force of compassion, may I clear the darkness from the minds of all beings with the points of the path that I have discerned them. 
May I hold this teaching for a very long time. With my heart going out with great compassion in whatever direction the most precious teachings have not yet spread, or once spread have declined, may I reveal this treasure of happiness and aid. May the minds of those who wish for liberation be granted down to peace, and the Buddha's deeds be nourished for a long time, by even this graded path to enlightenment completed, due to the wondrous virtuous conduct of the Buddhas and their children. May all human and non-human beings who eliminate adversity and create conducive conditions for practicing the excellent paths never be parted in any of their lives from the purest path praised by the Buddhas. Whenever someone makes effort to act in accordance with the tenfold Mahayana virtuous practices, may they always be assisted by the mighty ones, and may oceans of prosperity spread everywhere. Yeah, 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 yeah.